Hey, 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 it's Liam Killen. So thanks everyone for being here and welcome to this Roland house party, I guess we'll say. Just a little intro of the Roland VT4. This is a crazy vocal pedal, as you could hear. <laughs> I've been having way too much fun with it. I've been rediscovering the SB404 a bunch these days. You might have noticed that if you follow me on Instagram. I'd like to start off by answering people's questions that I got in the comments of previous videos in regards to the SB404. This time I'll be doing it a little bit differently because I'm answering everyone's encompassing questions all together. I've been asked this so many times, the general sentiment being, what is the SP404? Like, what does it do? What are you doing to your tracks? Are you composing full tracks with the SP404? Are you adding effects to it? So I'm giving you my take on the instrument and also just the way that I use it in general. Some people use the SP404 to sample and chop things up within the instrument. I find that it's a little bit too clunky for that in terms of workflow. I've worked with a bunch of different hardware electronic instruments like the OP-1, the OPZ, Arturia's Drum Brute, and some other vintage gear as well. And they all have different things and a lot to offer. The SP404 has less to offer, which is probably why it's a lot cheaper. But what it offers is not something that you could replicate with any other instrument or even any other kind of software. I use it as a sampler as well as a lo-fi effects box. I have a video for that up here. Basically any track that I create in my DAW, chances are that I'll be throwing it onto the SP404 and adding live multi effects to it kind of like DJ styles. And that's exactly what we're gonna be looking at in this video. I've already made another video on how I set up my multi effects. Here's another one for you. This video, however, is a little bit less technical and more musical. We're gonna be looking into my go-to multi effects with an emphasis on where I place them within a phrase. So we've got shorter phrases, that's effects that last for about two to three beats. And then of course we've got longer phrases, so anything from about three beats to let's say two bars long. Obviously nothing is exact here. You could determine what is a long phrase and what's a short phrase. No. And so the first thing we're gonna focus on is the shorter phrase because it's what I use the most. Jumma, jumma, I am a jumma. Jumma, jumma, I am a jumma. I'm gonna start all my phrases on the downbeat, so that's beat one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Pretty much anything you play on the SP404 is gonna sound good, but it does sound a little bit square starting everything on beat one. Let's start simply mixing it up. I'm gonna start all of my phrases on beat three now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. A strong reminder that I'm counting here, humans, stressing you to do the same thing. To me, this feels like more of a lift because we're extending those effects into the next bar or sometimes to the beginning of the next phrase. So this is the third practice with short phrases and we're gonna be carrying those effects over into the next bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
Personally, the third one is my favorite. I really like to mix it up and sort of keep people on their feet. I think the goal is to find a balance of the three examples that I just gave you. And I encourage you to experiment with this. Like you could do even shorter phrases, like before I was doing little shots. I've got a question for you now though, which one is your favorite? Maybe you're a bit more conventional, you like to start your fills on beat three and end on beat one. Maybe you like the shorter, shoddier phrases. Let me know in the comments. I'm curious as to what your favorites are. Obviously it still helps to do this exercise and sort of wrap your head around when to start and finish phrases. It's really like an overall music exercise. This'll just help you music. Lessons with Liam Killen, how to music. <laughs> Let's take a look specifically at filter sweeps for longer phrases. One, two, three, four. 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 Two, three, four. This idea is very simple and also very fun to execute. Of course, if you want, you could do like a simpler filter sweep. Let's say starting on beat one, ending again on beat one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two. Three, four, two. So there's two ways that I'm doing it there, right? I'm doing like a sweep and then just like a whoop, straight up cut back to full frequency. If you know what I'm saying, or you could have fun with it and do what I was just doing before. And there's actually a term for that. It's called over the bar line phrases. Learned that in jazz school. No. I was actually doing this before with the shorter phrases as well. Basically, it means that whatever effects or fill or whatever it is that you're using, it resolves over the bar line. Let's take a closer look at that and I'll explain as I'm doing it. So one, two, three, four. Filter sweep, two, three, four. Down on beat one, three, four, one, two, three, coming back up. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, right? So let's let's do a different phrase. Three, four, on four. Two, three, stop on four. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. This is pretty exciting for me. Like you could have a lot of fun with that. My best overall advice to you for this would be to really lean into things and experiment, try different things. Uh, don't be afraid, be bold to try different things. Just like learning, let's say an acoustic instrument or anything else in life, this kind of stuff takes practice. It's really important to go over these sorts of exercises. And like I mentioned before, this is, this is like a music exercise more so than an SP404 exercise. We're talking about phrasing. The idea is to internalize this and to make it a part of your vocabulary, entering into the subconscious mind. And that is all of the knowledge that I have for you today. Hopefully this was informative to all of you SP404ers. I appreciate you making it this far in the video. Thank you. If you have any comments or questions, please do not hesitate to ask me in the comments section below. If it's a really good question or comment, I'll bring it up in the next video. And of course, if you're into this sort of content, please make sure to like, subscribe, maybe even share. That sort of engagement really, really helps me out. So if you could do it, I would really appreciate that. <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry. Um, but uh, seriously, you guys are the best. I have a bunch of YouTube playlists linked in my description. They're categorized by instruments. So if you're interested in any other sort of electronic music gear, I might be covering it. Check it out, maybe you're interested. And of course, we're gonna be going out on a SP404 performance. I think I'm gonna call this one Cottagecore. Let me know if you, if you think that's a suiting title. <laughs>
This is what I used. This is what I used. This is what I used. This is what I used.